Welcome to Fierce Four. I am Adita Lang, your Fierce Four Nutrition and Wellness Director. Today we're going to be going over some yoga movements and hopefully some techniques that are going to help fine tune and enhance your classes. One of the first things that I like to get people involved in is what's going on in their feet. Your feet are the root of balance and they are the roots that are going to help you grow and extend your body from. So on that note, I want you to really take a look at your feet and take a feeling of your feet. So here's where you're going to use your mind quite a lot. Your feet are embedded into the floor. And if you could envision your foot as a square and all four points of that square are into the ground. So take your toes, lift them up, separate them wide, and then ground all the toes into the floor so that every single toe has weight. On the same note, push your heels into the ground. So now you've rooted your legs into the ground. This is imperative. And this is an imperative motion because unfortunately what happens with time is because we wear shoes, our feet don't develop the musculature that they should. And so the more and more that we wear shoes and we depend on shoes, the less our, our muscles innervate into our feet. And as time goes by, and as we become older, we start to lose balance. And the, the root of balance comes from our feet. So now, keeping that grounding into the ground, let's just take one leg. If we're going to lift one leg up, I want you right now to concentrate on what is going on on the foot that's on the floor. Most of the time, we shift our weight to our pinky toe or to our big toe. And that's what's going to throw us off. So I want you now to focus on all five toes. They should all have weight. Really ground those feet in. And in that you'll feel your heel almost as if your heel is spreading on the floor so that it gets grounded also. In that as you travel up the leg, you'll notice now your calf and your shins are tightening up. In through your quads and up into your glute. Okay, and that foot needs to stay anchored. The other thing that throws us off now when we're talking about balance is where our eyes are. So when it comes to a beginner exerciser, you want them to focus on one thing and keep their vision on one thing. As people become more advanced, you can actually ask them to close their eyes or close one eye, or you can ask them to look around without really losing their balance. But the root of all that balance comes from what's going on in the foot. So now you can change legs. From a beginner standpoint, it would be just touching the toes so that they can really start to focus on what's going on in this foot. As time goes on, you now start to move the leg up, and with the progressions, now you start to move the leg out. Okay? Again, keeping that root in, and really trying to teach your students. If you think about it, yoga is all about focus. So when you're trying to teach your students about balancing, you want them to focus on what is happening in that leg, where their weight is in their toes. When they really start to pay attention, they'll be able to fix any compensation. So if they normally push their weight to their pinky, they'll start to learn to put their weight into their big toes so they can really center what's going on in their foot. So if you take the feet now separated, again rooting, so you grab the toes up, you push them into the floor so that all five toes, or ten toes in this case, have weight. And just work on a basic squatting motion, just sitting into the floor. When your feet are rooted into the ground, your body weight is centered. You won't want to fall too far backwards or too far front because you're really centering and rooting that weight and you're going to bring it up. In yoga, we do what's called a chair pose. So we bring both of our feet together, again, toes up, ground them in so you really root yourself down and we sit down into it. The average person, because their weight is going all over the feet, then the body starts to move around. Once you really root those feet, you can sit stable and that's what you want. You want the stability and everything to first start from your feet. From your feet is where it goes up into your knees and from your knees it goes up through the hips. Does that make sense? I hope so. So your feet is where it all starts. You'll start to notice some students will have problems really grasping their toes into the floor. This is going to sound silly but trust me this works. Is take a tissue and tell that student that as a homework assignment, you want them to pick up the tissue with their toes so that you can start getting those muscles of their toes to kick in and to work because that's going to make them a much more stable senior. Everything we do now has a reflection on how we're going to be 10, 20, 30 years later. 
So we want those feet to really be strong all around and a very balanced amount of strength. As another exercise with your feet, work on just lifting up through the toes. Again, all 10 toes have weight. If I put too much weight on the big toe or on the pinky, I'm going to start to move around. It's when I keep myself very stable at the center that I have control. Now granted, at that point, the muscles of the shin are really going to kick in. And some people may find it awkward or painful. And those pains and awkwardness has to do with their muscular imbalances. So it's something they just have to work towards. No one has to go all the way up. You can go just a few inches or centimeters up and work your way back down again. Not necessarily working on calf development, but working on the balance and the strength that's going on in the front part of your foot. Because that's going to have a big premise on how we do all the other movements we want to do in yoga. So if you want to start in just a basic stance, feet are hip distance apart. So hip distance apart means right at the center of the hip joint, not at the outer edges. Most people, and I got to say this, most women, they start thinking it's the outer edges of their hips. It's not. It's right at the hip joint. So find your center there. Now once you've got your center there, you can work on just a basic motion. Bringing your hand right into prayer, taking one leg, bringing it up, focusing and finding that balance in one foot, placing that leg right back where it came from, so right back at that hip distance apart, and then bring yourself up into the next leg. A basic, very basic, basic movement just to get their feet warmed up and, and their mind really engaged into what's happening in the foot. From there, we can take it and we can just hold. Just holding the pose. Now, our arms have a lot to do with balance also. So, when we were kids, we used to learn to balance with our arms way out. The further our levers are, the more balanced and stable we're going to be. The closer in, the more unstable, and the further away, the more unstable. So that's going to be up to the progression of where that student is. I like to hold it right at center. So we can take it right into a tree pose and hold it here. Now, because this foot is pushing into the thigh, we tend to put our weight into the pinky toe. So at this point, you actually have to draw more weight into your big toe so that you can find center and keep the foot stable. So really think of what's going on in that foot as you have the exercise on hold there. And take that down. And when the foot comes down, it goes right back down to hip distance apart. So let's take it to the other side. Again, this foot's going to try to push the hip out. When the hip goes out, weight goes to the pinky. So take your big toe and square yourself off. By centering this foot and all of your weight, all of a sudden your hips come right back into center, which is where they should be. And your foot remains very stable. This is the exact same place that your foot would be if you were going to go out to a T-pose or even to an airplane. It's all about what's going on in this foot. Because again, if I put my weight onto my pinky, I'm going to shoot my hips off to the side. So by keeping the weight very centered into my foot and using all five toes, my hips have a much better chance of holding right into the center, which in turn will keep the alignment through my spine, engage my abdominals, and engage my hips, and bring it right back down. So it's all about the feet. One of the next things with the feet I want you to think about is really keeping the flexibility in the foot. So one area that you can go is if you take the feet and you work your balance, your feet are all engaged in the floor, you work your way down into the ground and just sit. Not necessarily like an exercise, not doing repetitions. The average person is not going to have the flexibility in their Achilles to keep their heels down. So they're going to be up here, which is fine. But now what I'd like to see them doing is I'd like to see them trying to push their heels down because that motion of trying to push your heels down is going to stretch out the muscles in your feet. And it's going to help to really elongate and, and engage those muscles so that they realize they've got to work. So they're here and they're stretched. You can bring it right back into center and pull yourself right back up and hold center. Again, keeping those feet grounded into the floor. That is going to help you with all of your exercises. Every single pose we do in yoga engages the feet in one way or another. And typically, we start to fall over or lose balance because we also lose our focus. 
So if you take just a few minutes to teach your participants how to focus on what's going on in their foot so that they can remain balanced because of that strength of their feet, not only will their feet become stronger, but they'll also be able to, to create more balance in their day-to-day -day activities. They'll run better, they'll walk better, they'll climb up stairs better, and that makes a big difference. Thank you for joining us in exploring these wonderful yoga poses and exploring what's going on in our feet in yoga. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your yoga session.